Thank you, Maxine. What a wonderful example of the kind of individuals Hope College produces. And another one of those individuals is Matt Scogan. And Matt graduated from Hope in 2002 with majors in both political science and economics. He was a member of Morbid Board and was elected Vice President of Student Congress in 1999 and President in 2000. In 2001, Matt held an internship in the Office of Political Affairs at the White House while participating in the college's Washington Honors Semester. After gradu graduating from Hope, Matt served as a senior advisor for State Representative Barb Vanderveen in Lansing. Subsequently, he was awarded a Public Service Fellowship from Harvard University and went on to graduate from the Kennedy School of Government at Harvard University in 2005. He then accepted a 10-month research fellowship sponsored by the Bosch Foundation, a European think tank. In this role, he studied welfare reform in Germany. In 2007, Matt accepted a position working for the United States Treasury Department as the senior advisor to the undersecretary of the Treasury for Domestic Finance, who was one of his former professors. He also has worked for Massachusetts Governor Mitt Romney and for Wachovia Bank in Charlotte, North Carolina. With his hope and Harvard background and remarkable early career, Matt is uniquely prepared for his current role. Today he serves as Chief of Staff and Vice President for Corporate Strategy and Public Policy at NYSE Euronext, the company that runs the New York Stock Exchange. Sending his congratulations, Duncan Niedauer, CEO of the New York Stock Exchange, shares these remarks. Matt has worked with me as Chief of Staff at the New York Stock Exchange for nearly five years. During that time, he has become a trusted advisor and key member of my executive team. He's an intelligent, creative young man, while still early in his career, has shown the ability to succeed at the highest levels in both business and government. This cross-discipline experience will serve Matt well as an emerging leader, as problem solving in the future will require collaboration and the application of broader perspectives. Matt is a rising star who will undoubtedly have an impact on the world, and I'm excited to see where his future takes him. In addition to meeting the demands of family and career, Matt has been quick to share his time with Hope students. In 2010, Matt accepted an invitation from the Student Congress Speaker Series to give a public lecture on campus. Matt's lecture was titled, From Washington to Wall Street, Who is Looking Out for Main Street? Matt has also presented on campus on leadership development and what it is like living and working as a person of faith in high level positions in Washington DC and New York. Matt, for your service to society through leadership and finance, government and policy, and for your continual commitment to share your experiences with students like me, it is a pleasure on behalf of the Alumni Association and all of us at Hope College to present you with this 2014 Young Alumni Award. Thank you, Connor. Um, I have to say, I am. It, it, nobody told me what this award was going to be, and I'm excited that it's not another pair of wooden shoes. <laughs> uh, although I love wooden shoes, um, I have several pairs already. Uh, uh, thank you, Connor, for that very nice introduction. Uh, thank you all for being here. To Dr. and Mrs. Boltman, to Richard Ray, to Dean Frost, who I think is still here, to Tom Kairos, to Scott Travis, to all of the Hope faculty and staff who are here, to anyone who had anything to do with my nomination or selection for this award, thank you. This is a big honor for me, and I am uh, privileged. I will set aside any suspicions I have that this may be a mistake, and just graciously <laughs> uh, acknowledge what an honor it is to be up here. And Maxine, it's an honor to be sharing this stage with you tonight. I have a tremendous amount of respect for the organization that you represent. In fact, I start my day at least three times a week with a, <clears throat> with a tall vanilla blonde. A and, and just to be clear, that's a cup of coffee. <laughs> I don't want any rumors getting started tonight. Um, actually, this is true. I, I did this the other day. I looked at a map and I drew a four block radius around my apartment in Lower Manhattan. And within that circle, there are seven Starbucks coffee shops. It's really remarkable and they're all busy 
And it really is, it's one of the world's great brands and it's one of the great business stories of the United States. So you represent a great organization. I'm honored to be, to be up here with you. I wanna thank uh, my, my family who is here tonight. My mom is here. It's an honor for me to have you here. Uh, my siblings are here, my brother Tim and his wife Jen, my sister Alice, and my favorite brother Sam is here. Um, I rank my siblings. Um, uh, my Aunt Leslie's here, some very dear family friends, and my wife's grandparents are here, and, and it's an honor for me to say that three generations of my family are here with me tonight, so thank you all for being here. Um, I want to mention two people who are not here tonight who I wish were. Uh, my wife, Sarah, who I met at Hope College, and so this is a very special place to us. She is home in New York with our three kids, and as I speak, as I'm doing this, she's wrestling our three kids to bed. So <laughs> the real award ought to go to her. Um, I also, another person who I wish was here is my dad. And uh, actually, earlier this week, my dad turned six months old in heaven, and I miss him, and I wish he was here, and he would have wanted to be here, and I, and I wish he was here. Um, I, I, I look back on my life and my upbringing, and I realize how incredibly fortunate I am to have been raised by two parents who taught me how to love God. And to me, I, I think about the story of Noah, and if you know that story in the Bible, God is completely fed up with the world. And he says, I'm going to destroy everything, but Noah, I'm going to save you because you're a righteous man. And then he says, and by the way, you can bring your wife and kids. And I look at my life and I basically feel like I'm one of Noah's kids. I feel this enormous benefit, this enormous blessing of having been raised by parents who were righteous people and taught me how to love God. My parents taught me that I have a responsibility to God and to this country to change things that I don't like about it. And my parents taught me the importance of education. And I ought to say that when I was in high school, I desperately wanted to go to the University of Michigan. And it was my parents who told me that I ought to look at a smaller school. And that, combined with the fact that I didn't get in to the <laughs> University of Michigan, <laughs> made Hope College my first choice. <laughs> and I have to say, when I look back on that, I am incredibly fortunate. I mean, that really is God leading me because I am incredibly fortunate to have gone to school at Hope College. And it really is amazing. I mean, you spend four years of your life at an, or, at a, at an institution like this when you're relatively young and pretty immature and it impacts you the rest of your life. And it really does. And that is true for me of Hope College. And I love coming back here any chance I get. Hope College is second to none in academics. It is world class. And I think I can say that because I went to Harvard after Hope College. And I was no less prepared for a rigorous graduate program at Harvard than any of my colleagues who went to Ivy League undergraduate programs. Hope College also prepared me for the working world. And I took advantage of anything I could get my hands on here to, to pursue out-of-classroom experiences. I did internships, I did local campaigns and elections, um, and th I did the Washington Honors Semester. And through Jack Holmes, who was and still is one of my mentors, I secured an internship in the White House. And I look back on those experiences and can say beyond a shadow of a doubt that I am where I am today professionally because of Hope College. And I would not be here if I had not gone to Hope College. But most, most importantly, what Hope did for me was it allowed me to take advantage of opportunities that existed at Hope to strengthen my faith, and those opportunities were not forced on me. They were optional. And that made my faith more genuine and stronger. And I actually think that is a unique model. I think this model does not exist at any other school in the world. I do. I believe that. World-class academics, amazing out-of-the-classroom opportunities, and a faith component that's optional. And to me, the way that's manifested itself is a deep desire to define my own success by the impact I can have on the world. I, I, believe my, I, I believe fervently that my path is the epitome of the American dream. Middle class kid from Michigan, public schools my whole life, then Hope College, then Harvard. Then at 26 years old, I was appointed by the President of the United States to a relatively senior post in government. And then at 29 years old, I, I became the Chief of Staff of the New York Stock Exchange, an iconic American institution. And I honestly believe, I'm sorry, I'm not saying that to brag about myself. 
I'm sorry, that, I, I'm not saying that to brag about myself. I'm saying that because I think in this country there is a unique chance for regular guys to be successful that does not exist in other parts of the world. In other parts of the world, that path is only possible if you have access to money or family connections. And I had neither. And when I look back on that path, to me, the key stepping stone was Hope College. It really was. See, I think I'm representing the institution that is the capital of global capitalism. And what I want to try to tell you tonight is that I think the real American dream, I think the real American dream is the unique chance that average people have in this country to make a difference. And it's deeply ingrained in the culture of this country. It really is. The first volunteer fire department anywhere in the world was started by Benjamin Franklin in the United States 40 years before the revolution. When de Tocqueville visited the United States in the 1800s, he wrote in his journal about how impressed he was that Americans took care of their neighbors and didn't rely on government to do it. And today, in the United States, we have a million and a half nonprofit organizations. And the ratio of nonprofit organizations to individual citizens is higher here than anywhere else in the world. And so I think deeply ingrained in the people of this country is that sense of service and hope and places like it can help keep that alive. Because I honestly believe that there's a risk that we lose it. I think there's a risk that we are increasingly defining success in this country by excess. I do. I work on Wall Street. <laughs> and and look, look, there are some good grounded people on Wall Street. There are. But most of my friends on Wall Street think I am nuts for having worked in government. And they think I'm absolutely insane because I want to go back. But I do. And sure, I will not have the same income trajectory that my colleagues who will spend their whole career on Wall Street will have. But I want to make a difference. I want to make this country a better place. And I believe that I'm a living example of the fact that the American dream is alive and well. But I'm worried. I'm worried that success in this country depends too much today on where you were born and who your parents are. Recent study from Harvard just last week showed that income mobility in the United States has not changed in the last 50 years. That means if you're born into a poor family today, you have, you're just as likely to be poor as an adult as our grandparents' generation. And to me, in America, in the land of opportunity, that lack of progress is just unacceptable. And unfortunately, and I've walked by these protesters every day for the last few years, and unfortunately, I think the whole conversation we've had in the last few years around the 1% and income inequality has completely missed the point. Completely missed the point. Because if you're focusing on income inequality, that's a symptom. If you're focusing on income, that's the outcome. <laughs> and you ought to be focusing on the real problem, which is unequal opportunity. I've been to believe that the same, pe same percentage of people are born geniuses everywhere. I think the same percentage of babies are born geniuses in the Bronx, New York, as in Holland, Michigan, as in Beverly Hills, California. And the problem is we may be missing our next Steve Jobs or the kid who's going to invent the cure to cancer because they happen to be born in the wrong school district. And to me, <laughs> unfortunately, I think the debate in Washington is focused almost exclusively on redistributing wealth rather than creating opportunity. And when I look at the US economy, when I look at the US economy, I think the real problem we face is, a, is not income inequality, but a lack of opportunity, a lack of growth. And we have decided to subsidize growth in this country by debt, and we are so addicted to debt now. I don't even know if we know what, debt with, what growth without debt looks like. The average American's share of our national debt is $55,000, and to make it worse, our college kids today are leaving college with $30,000 of student debt. So before we even get started, We've got $85,000 of debt attached to us. And you say, well, wow, those are serious problems. Good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> and my response is, thank you. Because I think hope prepared me to run towards the most complex, messy problems we face in, so in society rather than run away from it. And hope did it by teaching me that the world we live and work in is not our own. This is our Father's world. This is God's world. And if you believe that, if you believe in the redemption of the world that God wants us to be a part of, if you believe in the resurrection, then you actually have a different kind of motivation to work towards solutions to those problems. And that's why I think this unique model that Hope has is so important. I love this place. I hope you can tell that. I will do anything for this place. I am honored by this award. Thank you so much for tonight. Thank you for being here, and thank you for this award. <laughs>